Good evening, everyone. Uh, Tamir Bloom, uh, I'm a uh, pediatric orthopedic surgeon, and uh, I'm going to be talking about club feet and uh, metatarsus uh, adductus, uh, two very common foot deformities that we treat. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Dean and Dr. Wittig for the invitation to uh, present to you today. So uh, most of uh, the presentation will be focused on uh, club feet, uh, as this is a, a much more uh, a complex uh, and uh, involved uh, in terms of management uh, condition uh, as opposed to metatarsis uh, adductus. Um, so hopefully I'll address some of the uh, common uh, questions that uh, uh, the pediatricians have out there. So, uh, so what is a club foot, also uh, known as a talpes equinovarus? Uh, talpes uh, is Latin for uh, uh, ankle and foot, and equinovarus uh, describes two of the four uh, deformities of a club foot. Uh, equinus, which is a plantar flexion of the foot relative to the uh, leg. Uh, varus, which is the hind foot uh, medial deviation relative to the uh, leg. Uh, forefoot adductus, which is medial deviation of the forefoot relative to the hind foot. And cavus, which is plantar flexion of the uh, the great uh, toe or the lateral ray or sorry medial ray of the foot relative to the hind foot. So, if you guys um, are able to recognize those four deformities, then you can uh, diagnose uh, a club foot. Uh, so club feet are uh, quite common, about one in uh, a thousand. Uh, in some populations, uh, can be a bit higher, one in uh, 250. They're a bit more common in. Uh, in boys, uh, they can be uh, bilateral and uh, up to 50% of the time. Uh, they are congenital. This is a um, diagnosis that you can make in a newborn. Uh, and uh, they range in severity from being uh, 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 very stiff to uh, not, not so stiff. So we'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, the uh, inheritance is uh, multifactorial. We know that in terms of the etiology, uh, they're uh, probably a combination of genetic and uh, environmental factors. Uh, we know this from uh, 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 twin studies, uh, as well as uh, some of the uh, genes uh, that have been associated with club feet have been uh, described. Some of the environmental risk factors uh, include uh, uh, maternal uh, history of uh, smoking during uh, gestation, maternal obesity, gestational diabetes, uh, as well as um, uh, uh, use of uh, SSRIs uh, during pregnancy. As we'll see, there are some neuromuscular conditions that are associated with club feet, and so this uh, has uh, led to a, 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 a neuromuscular e uh, etiology uh, during uh, fetal development as the etiology of club foot. But the, uh, the exact etiology is unknown. Uh, what we do know that it is not due to intrauterine molding. Uh, some of the uh, conditions uh, we talked about, like torticollis, uh, as well as uh, metatarsal ductus are associated with the intruder molding, but not club feet. So what is the pathoanatomy? Uh, essentially, all the musculoskeletal elements uh, from uh, the leg uh, down to the toes are, are involved, including the bones and the joints, which are dysplastic, and, uh, and the joints are malaligned, particularly in the, uh, the ankle and in the hind foot. Both the ligaments and, and capsules uh, are contracted, uh, and uh, this suggests a, a suggestive of some of the fibroproliferative disorders that we see, such as uh, Dupuytren's uh, contractors. Uh, there is uh, uh, atrophy and uh, abnormal muscle fibers uh, in the muscles of the leg, uh, and there are also associated vascular uh, abnormalities. So this is a truly a complex uh, a deformity. The, uh, this is a natural history. You saw the natural history of, of uh, torticollis, but this is, uh, this is a deformity that persists, uh, and uh, if not corrected, as in uh, uh, this child and this uh, probably uh, young adult, uh, results in uh, significant morbidity uh, and uh, significantly affects uh, quality of, of life. Uh, th there are a number of different classifications for club feet, but probably the most common one uh, 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 I can simplify into uh, basically idiopathic club feet, which are club feet that are uh, otherwise found in, in healthy, uh, normal uh, babies or children. Uh, and um, uh, and uh, those uh, make up the vast majority of club feet that we see. Uh, there is a, a sub uh, category of, of atypical or club uh, complex idiopathic.
empathic love beats that tend to be a bit stiffer and usually require more, uh, uh, more, more treatment and have a higher relapse rate. There is such thing as a postural or position clubfoot, which is a clubfoot, I'm sorry, which is a foot that looks like a clubfoot, but what separates it from a true clubfoot is its flexibility. And then there is a small percentage of club feet that are found in uh, uh, syndromic and uh, neurogenic, uh, sorry, uh, neurogenic conditions. Uh, and this is just a picture of a, uh, a three week old that was born here and uh, just recently started treatment uh, for uh, her club feet. So, what are these? Uh, associated neuromuscular conditions that we should always look for. Uh, these include, uh, uh, there, there's an arrow here, there you go. Uh, this is a uh, child with uh, knee flexion contractures. This is arthrogryposis. Uh, this is an infant with a, a knee dislocation. Uh, this child has Larsen syndrome, and you can see the club foot here. Uh, and this is a child, unfortunately, I cut off the feet, but you can see missing digits. Uh, and this child has uh, Streeter syndrome or amniotic band syndrome. So we always want to think about these conditions. Uh, the, how about the diagnosis of club feet? This is a, uh, a, a clinical diagnosis. Uh, and uh, what we want to do during our clinical exam is basically look, uh, feel, and move the foot. What are we looking for? We're looking for uh, the size. The club foot's always going to be a bit smaller. So if you have a, a, a unilateral club foot, uh, the foot's always going to be a little smaller than the normal foot. The calf is always going to be a bit uh, smaller in, uh, in width as well. Uh, and um, the child is going to have skin creases on the medial side of the foot as well as uh, in, the, uh, in the back of the hind foot, as you can see here. Uh, the foot is going to feel stiff. It's not going to move uh, that well, uh, particularly in dorsiflexion. Okay? In the true club foot, you're not going to be able to dorsiflex the foot uh, up, to, up to or beyond neutral. Uh, you're going to, uh, we, we move the foot to see if it's passively correctable. Again, this is going to help us differentiate it from a postural club foot. Uh, and then we want to examine the entire uh, infant or child, again, to rule out um, uh, neurologic or syndromic causes, uh, such as a, a spina bifida. Uh, and uh, um, unlike uh, metatarsus adductus, uh, 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 a club foot is not uh, a risk factor for, for hip dysplasia. So if you diagnose a club foot, uh, uh, it is not recommended to get, uh, or I should say it's not necessary to obtain a uh, hip ultrasound in an infant. Uh, but uh, hip ultrasound, I'm sorry, but ultrasound is available uh, for um, a diagnosis uh, of a club foot prenatally. Uh, it is uh, pretty accurate, up to 83%. Uh, although the false positive rate uh, varies from 10 uh, up to 30 percent. Uh, we can typically uh, diagnose a club foot, as, as you can see here, uh, about 27 weeks uh, or uh, 30 weeks. The, the older the uh, fetus, the, the more accurate the diagnosis. Uh, the, uh, the prenatal diagnosis uh, helps us to rule out any associated anomalies, and I think most importantly gives the family a time to understand uh, the condition and get prepared for the treatment. And in fact, most mothers uh, who've had infants with club feet uh, prefer to have the prenatal diagnosis based on uh, studies listed over here. Uh, the, uh, uh, I think the world owes uh, a debt of gratitude to this uh, gentleman who unfortunately passed away a few years ago. This is uh, Ignacio Ponsetti, uh, and he developed uh, the uh, Ponsetti method, which is the gold standard for uh, current treatment uh, of club feet worldwide. The, uh, Ponsetti method involves uh, three, three basic steps. Uh, the first one is a series of uh, castings. Usually these are plaster casts from uh, groin to toe, uh, and the casts um, are placed on uh, every five to seven days. Uh, the, the foot prior to casting is manipulated uh, due to, uh, I'm sorry, using a technique described by Ponsetti. Uh, and then after the, uh, the foot is uh, corrected, as you can see here, this is a uh, uh, this is uh, perhaps the, the final cast. Uh, uh, we move on to step two. And here's, uh, here's the newborn that I, I mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, this is the first cast, uh, uh, three weeks of age. The step two of the Ponsetti technique uh, involves a, a percutaneous tendo Achilles tenotomy. Uh, this is not a lengthening, this is tenotomy. You want to cut the tendon completely. Uh, this can be done in the OR as shown here or uh, in uh, in good hands uh, in the uh, in the office. Uh, 
the, uh, the tenotomy is um, followed by a cast that's put on uh, for three weeks. And then uh, we move on to step three, which is a, uh, a brace. Uh, this is a foot abduction or orthosis that holds the foot corrected. Uh, the first three months it is worn uh, uh, 23 hours a day. And then uh, the uh, infant is weaned uh, nighttime. And Pontetti recommended wearing the brace till uh, upwards of five years of age. So this is a uh, long-term uh, commitment. The uh, involved foot is usually abducted a bit more than the uninvolved uh, foot, as you can see here. The uh, Pontetti technique, uh, when uh, uh, correctly applied uh, and with good patient compliance, has excellent results and achieves correction in greater than 95% of patients. Pontetti's own data from uh, Iowa uh, which is uh, 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 on average uh, three decades of follow-up uh, found uh, nearly 80% excellent to good uh, uh, results in terms of pain and, and, and function uh, compared to 95% uh, in the normal population, which is not statistically uh, significant. Uh, the uh, important, uh, 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 one of the important factors that Fonsetti also noted was that uh, children who ended up needing surgery uh, had a much lower uh, outcome score, 43%. Uh, another, uh, uh, another important uh, question I guess from parents, does Pontetti treatment uh, delay uh, early gross development? Uh, and the answer to that is uh, has not found to be the case. It may delay uh, certain uh, milestones by uh, one to three months, such as, uh, such as walking, but uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it is not found to significantly impair uh, motor development, except uh, in the case of surgery, uh, uh, which is uh, rarely uh, required uh, in less than a year of age, not counting the percutaneous uh, tenotomy uh, as, as a surgery. This is more of a procedure. Uh, and kids with neuro neurodevelopmental difficulties uh, tend, to have, uh, tend to have some impairments as opposed to uh, kids who otherwise do not have these uh, uh, difficulties. How about when, when should we start uh, the Pontetti treatment? When should we start casting? Uh, Pontetti showed, and, and multiple investigators have showed that uh, you have a couple of months. Uh, certainly, we don't wait a few months. We, we start kind of uh, as soon as the patient uh, presents. Uh, you don't have to stop, start in the newborn nursery. Uh, uh, the, I think what's more important is uh, educating the family uh, and uh, having them buy into the prolonged treatment duration and probably what's more important than when you first start casting is when you, when you stop the treatment. These children, as you'll see, need to be followed uh, for, for at least uh, a few years. Um, good results can even be achieved with a pancetic treatment up to two years of age. Um, so, <clears throat> Uh, so, um, uh, long-term follow-up is uh, necessary because uh, uh, the main uh, 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 problem with uh, Pontetti treatment is that there's a uh, uh, it's, there's prolonged treatment course and the relapse uh, uh, can be high if there's a uh, loss of follow-up or there's any deviation from the uh, Pontetti treatment methods. Uh, and this relapse may occur up to 10 uh, years of age. Uh, the, the, Biggest risk factors that lead to relapse uh, include non-compliance with a brace, uh, as well as other factors that have been found, such as uh, high school education or less, uh, and uh, stiffer feet, which tend to be the neuromuscular feet. Uh, so uh, in, in summary, for, for club feet, uh, the, the, um, the treatment is long and involved. Uh, and I think what's most important initially when, you, uh, when I see these children uh, either in the, in the newborn nursery or when they come to our office, uh, is developing a uh, rapport with the, with the family uh, and um, uh, explaining to them the prolonged uh, duration of uh, treatment. Um, uh, this, uh, this, this is important uh, in order for the family to be familiar with the Pontetti method. Uh, and uh, uh, the biggest, uh, by far the biggest problems we have is compliance with a brace. So every time I, I see the family, uh, I try to have a, a positive encouragement uh, when, when they're doing a good job uh, keeping their, uh, their child in the brace. Uh, so just a little bit about metatarsis adductus. This is just uh, uh, 
uh, uh, much less, uh, sorry, much more benign uh, condition than club feet. Uh, this is a medial deviation of the forefoot relative uh, to the hind foot, as you can see here. If you look at the <coughs> bottom of the foot, it'll look uh, bean shaped, and the, and the lateral border uh, will be curved. Here's the normal foot, here's the metatarsus adductus. Uh, this is uh, due to uh, intrauterine uh, uh, positioning and a tight intrauterine space, and it may be associated with torticollis and hip dysplasia. I think uh, if you see an instance like this, uh, they certainly should have a, uh, a hip uh, clinical examination and possibly uh, an ultrasound uh, as, as well. Uh, this is uh, uh, incidence of uh, metatarsus adductus is uh, one in 100,000 and uh, uh, is uh, bilateral 50 to 80% of the time. Uh, the uh, management is usually uh, uh, gentle reassurance of the parents uh, and observation because about 95% of these will correct spontaneously by the age of five. Um, uh, occasionally, if, uh, if these deformities are uh, on, on the stiffer side, I will do uh, a few uh, casting to stretch them out. And uh, Dr. Ponsetti also described the uh, correct maneuver to, uh, to serially manipulate and cast uh, metatarsis adductus. Uh, the uh, uh, casting is not that uh, often needed, uh, fortunately, uh, and, and surgery is uh, even, even rare. Uh, here's a picture of an older child who had uh, uh, significant deformities, and you can see that this may affect shoe wear and cause skin irritation or cause pain in the foot, and, and these are indications for uh, considering surgery. So. Uh, two quite uh, different uh, conditions, both in, in etiology uh, and uh, natural history and outcome. And uh, I'll leave it, uh, leave it there. Thank you for your time.